the most. <laughs> in Emotional, the series that these videos are, I once a month explain why I chose each one of the different devotionals that I have of the eight that I read daily and <laughs> why devotional is your participation with me and making me accountable to read them through because I used to read them every day. You know, maybe one of them I didn't have in those days, but I had a different one instead and I don't remember what it was, otherwise I might have it. But once a month I try to explain, you know, what the book is and maybe why or how it came about. And with Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers, it's always fascinating to me, this book, because this may be, at the end of my day, so to speak, the only time that I've ever gotten through the entire book <laughs> as I pray, God help me to get through this. Because my challenge was, I don't remember if somebody challenged me with it or if I just thought of it myself, but I have never met anyone who was able to read it every day much less live by it every day because there is so much direct confrontation with the reality of who we are and what we are in it that if there ever was an opportunity to live it I think we would walk into heaven at the end of it <laughs> literally I don't think that anyone could survive all the words that are written herein with which all the explanation of what God has done in this man's life as he considered the Lord and how it applied to him. It is a classic that is one that I know many people keep on the shelf and read occasionally because even just one you could spend a week on or a month on or maybe a lifetime on. But in my life, it came into my life very early as a born-again Christian. And I don't think I was saved very long before I actually found it. And I think maybe somebody might have given it to me even. But when I had it, I read the first one and it was so what I wanted that I've never been without it. I mean, I've always had this in my backpack <laughs> whenever I went anywhere. I always carried a few things. I carried my utmost. My strongest recordings, if I had one at the time, paperback edition, and a Bible, you know, and it didn't matter if I was in a hospital bed or where I was, I had my backpack and I had my Bible, you know, and sure enough, daily would get into it. So, in any devotional, whatever it is that God is inspiring you and works within your heart, your circumstances, and how you hear God, then it will bring you to a place of understanding him in a better way then that is what you should use according to his will for you for me all eight of these emotionals are the covenant so to speak or the agreement that i made with you the watcher or you the person watching this video either for the first time or all along the time that for one year we would record wherever however the reality of it raining or sunshine or you know, whatever I'm wearing, the perspective of Jesus sitting here with us and participating in what he would share with us together as you watch and as you pray and let God lead you along the way. In utmost, the will to loyalty. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua 24:15 will is the whole man active i cannot give up my will i must exercise it i must will to obey i must will to receive god's spirit when god gives a vision of truth it is never a question of what he will do but of what we will do the lord has been putting before us all some big propositions and the best thing to do is to remember what you did when you were touched by god before the time you were saved or first saw Jesus or realized some truth. It was easy then to yield allegiance to God. Recall those moments now as the Spirit of God brings before you some new proposition. Recall back and remember how easy it was that first day. Choose you this day whom you shall serve. 
It is a deliberate calculation, not something into which you drift easily. And everything else is in obedience until, or is in obeyance until you decide. Everything else stands still until you make that conscious decision of your will. The proposition is between you and God. Do not confer with flesh and blood about it. With every new proposition, other people get more and more out of it. That is where the strain comes. God allows the opinion of his saints to matter to you, and yet you are brought more and more out of the certainty that others understand the step you are taking. A step of faith is a step of faith. When you walk with me, you will step by faith. You have no business to find out where God is leading. The only thing God will explain to you is himself. God is love. Profess to him, I will be loyal. Immediately you choose to be loyal to Jesus Christ. You are a witness against yourself should you disobey. Don't consult other Christians but profess before him, I will serve you. Will to be will and make your will to be loyal and give other people credit for being loyal too. You know, that's such a key issue there because a lot of times we think that we have such a huge devotion to God that we are somehow capable of making decisions for other people about what their relationship with God is as opposed to allowing God to choose and to direct them in their life. You may have and thought that you had for the rest of your life some place that you were going to be and be rooted and grounded and settled in that. And in reality, just like the plants on this porch are potted, God may have picked you up out of that comfort zone and put you someplace else that you weren't familiar with. So too, someone else may be going through that experience and you need to allow God his will in it. But for us, for me, it is always a choice each and every day to not just understand the long-term vision of it, but the reality of what I will do today with my will. Because if I choose to exercise my will, then I will go about selfishly doing and indulging in things that are only for me. But if I choose to do and to subjugate my will for his will, and I purpose within my heart to do it, which means that I will to do it, then I am making myself of a choice to participate with God in what he has already planned out and decided for the day. It's really easy, and it's not this deep a thought if you just simply went along with whatever it is that God tells you to do, that you do. Or if you hear what he says, do it. You know, just that simple. It boils down to childlike faith. A parent tells a child what they want it to do. If a parent isn't telling a child what they should do, then the parent isn't parenting, but is babysitting. And there's a difference between babysitting and parenting. Because the parenting trains up a child in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they shall not depart. And that they would return to it during their time of rebellion. You know, they'll, they'll come back. But if you're babysitting someone and letting them decide for themselves what they should do, then you're putting your hands into the life of a child and they have not the knowledge to determine where they should go, what they should do, and who they should listen to. So God treats us as his children and determines for us each and every day how he would parent us to become sons and daughters of God.